Yes, perfect. So good afternoon and welcome back from the break. I hope you enjoyed your coffee or your tea, or if you were in Warsaw that you perhaps had a nice chat with a colleague. Um, so welcome to this uh, session on sustainability and nutrition labeling initiatives. How does organic fit? I am Sylvia Schmidt. I'm policy associate uh, manager at iPhone Organic Syrup, and I'm absolutely delighted to be moderating this session today. So at the end of the session, we will be answering questions. Uh, so you're really invited to ask um, all the questions that come to mind. If you are attending this event online, please write your questions on the chat box and not on the Q&A box, on the chat box that is on the right of your live stream. And if you are attending, attending from Warsaw, you can do it the old fashioned way. So you just raise your, mic, uh, your hand and ask for a mic and then you can uh, ask your question. So before uh, um, introducing our two speakers, I wanted to give you a bit of a political scene of what is happening in terms of um, initiatives on labeling at the EU level. It's quite complicated, so I hope I don't uh, lose a few of you during this uh, short explanation. So in the farm to work strategy, there are several initiatives regarding labeling. And so of course today we will focus only on the sustainability and on the nutrition uh, labeling initiatives. On the nutrition uh, part, the commission uh, has committed to a proposal for a harmonized mandatory front of pack nutrition labeling, and that is expected for end of next year. And on the sustainability side, the commission has um, said that it will issue a proposal for a sustainable food labeling framework. And this one is expected in 2024. So I don't have to add much on the nutrition labeling side. I just want to mention that many of you coming from all around Europe and even the world we actually saw. But for those that are in Europe, you will have seen in several member states already that the Nutri-Score is, um, is in supermarkets and is already available. And so our first speaker will be uh, talking to us about the Nutri-Score and whether this is good news or actually rather not so good news for the organic sector. Um, and now I just want to zoom in a bit more on the sustainability labeling part, which is the, the more complicated part, as I said before. And to do that, I need to um, mention and, and bring into this conversation the product environmental footprint or the PEF. And what is the PEF? So the PEF is a tool that has been developed by the European Commission for the past 10 years. And um, it is meant to it's a tool to evaluate and assess the environmental impact of products during their life cycle. So it's based on 15 impact categories of which there is land use, water use, uh, climate change, um, ozone depletion, and a couple more. But in these impact categories, we do not um, see an assessment of externalities such as um, the impact of a certain product on biodiversity or its impact on um, animal welfare or the impact that pesticides might have on the environment. And, you know, these are clearly the things that organic is, is really good at, um, minimizing externalities. So having a tool that doesn't really take into account the things that organic is really good at might be a bit of a, a threat. But so we'll see how to make that an opportunity with our um, second speaker as um, just one thing that I would like to add is that in addition to the sustainable food labeling framework that is expected in 2024, we have um, also uh, recently seen that in December of this year, the Commission will issue a proposal for a regulation on substantiating environmental claims using the PEF. So, you know, in this initiative, we're talking about substantiating environmental claims and not a label as such, but still the Commission has decided to use the PEF. So it is a bit of a guess game, but we could think that for the sustainability label, it, label, it might also be um, based in some way or inspired in some way by uh, from the PEF. So I will end now my uh, short introduction, and now I want to uh, bring in our speakers who will enlighten us on both these initiatives, both the nutrition part and the sustainability part. And the first up is uh, Hans Kaufmann. He is head of communications at BNN, 
the Bundesverband Naturkost uh, Naturwaren, which is the association of organic processors, retailers, and wholesalers in Germany. So Hans, the floor is yours. What about nutrition labeling and the Snooty scores? What has BNN been up to? Yes, uh, thank you, Sylvia, and uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for the invitation to this conference. Um, I'm Hans Kaufmann, Head of Communications at the German Organic Food and Natural Goods Association, short BNN. And yeah, I'm pleased to show you or present you our small but effective consumer campaign on the Nutri-Score or uh, actually against the Nutri-Score. So um, I would like to present you um, within seven minutes um, for fundamental questions uh, regarding this campaign. Um, so first question, what was our occasion for this campaign? Uh, second, what was our argumentation strategy? And third, uh, how did we implement the campaign? And uh, on fourth, um, how have we or what have we achieved? So what was our occasion for this campaign? Uh, in November 2020, the German government built a legal basis for the use of the Nutri-Score on packaged foods in Germany. And uh, so conventional food manufacturers and retailers increasingly used the Nutri-Score. And uh, first surveys on the effect of the Nutri-Score on uh, organic consumers have shown that the absence of the Nutri-Score has an influence on the buying decision. So um, this also increased the pressure from consumers on the organic food sector, uh, which still hardly use the Nutri-Score because it uh, puts organic food at a disadvantage. Therefore, we saw the need uh, to inform consumers why the majority of the organic companies does not use the Nutri-Score to avoid uh, maybe negative uh, business developments in long term. So what was our argumentation strategy? Our main aim was to inform consumers why the organic companies hardly use the Nutri-Score, especially to prevent consumers to make up their own minds and maybe drawing uh, wrong conclusions um, about the absence of the Nutri-Score. Um, for us, it was clear that the Nutri-Score disadvantages organic foods, but we also knew that this fact would not interest the consumer or the customers at the end. So um, for this reason, um, we have picked out product examples that are very close to the consumer uh, and that make the misleading nature of the Nutri-Score quite clear. For example, we have uh, compared the Nutri-Score rating um, of a Diet Coke with the rating of an organic apple juice. And we asked the consumer uh, if they think the Nutri-Score is uh, misleading. Um, through our product examples, um, we have linked the misleading nature of the Nutri-Score to the fact that organic foods are disadvantaged. So we thought um, this clarif clarification um, uh, will provide the customer an added value. So we prevent them uh, of yeah, misleading um, um, information. So yeah, how did we implement the campaign? Um, the campaign was, of course, preceded by a deep substantive discussion about the Nutri score within our association. Um, the campaign itself had two main communication channels. First, um, the point of sale, and second, of course, social media. And um, these two channels were actually the best way to reach our customers in first. So therefore, the campaign focused on organic stores, mainly our members, and uh, our social media channels. And uh, for both, we created information material. So after 
we um, produced this material, the next step was uh, to get our members on board to really use the materials in their stores to inform their customers. And um, as you see um, on this uh, presentation, we um, used for the point of sale material an information flyer in which uh, our criticism of the Nutri-Score was uh, presented, especially in a customer friendly, simple and understandable way. Uh, in addition, we have designed uh, three poster motifs and each of it illustrates the criticism of the Nutri-Score using a specific product example. You see it uh, in the middle. Um, it is uh, the example the, of uh, Diet Coke and apple juice. So, um, and as I said, on the motors, we compare each other uh, and compare the rating of uh, Diet Coke and apple juice, for example. And as you see, um, we ask the consumer if they think the Nutri-Score mit, mit um, misleads them. Yeah, and in addition to the um, point of sale material, we as well produced social media material. Um, you can see here our different share picks. Uh, the base of this are our motives, the same we used um, for the posters. And um, to, uh, for more attention uh, on, so on the social media channels, um, we especially created uh, animated share picks. Uh, for us, it was the first time, um, which are equivalent to short animated uh, explain films. I will show them here and let them play through. And so our aim was to stop um, the sliding thumb, as I said, um, when, when people are checking Facebook or Instagram. Yes. So, um, bottom line, what have we achieved? Um, I have to say that we had just a small budget for this campaign um, and we decided because we decided to do it uh, in um, short notice. So most of it we realized um, in-house. Um, but our members have ordered more than 1,000, um, yeah, more than 1,000 uh, flyer and around 700 posters. Uh, on Facebook and Instagram, we had around um, 40,000 impressions. Uh, we placed an advertorial in an online version of an organic consumer magazine. It's called Photon Corn. And there we achieved uh, more than 116,000 page views within two weeks. And yeah, and in addition, we were able to put this topic on the media agenda again uh, with our campaign. And um, even the child children's edition of Der Spiegel ask us um, for a child-friendly written statement regarding the new score. So, um, yeah, the campaign contributed to the BNN increased awareness um, of the Ministry of Nutrition and uh, on this topic. And yeah, therefore we are really happy and um, yeah, and therefore we are happy with our campaign. Uh, just one word for the current, current situation um, in Germany. So we had the opportunity to submit our proposals for the further development of the Nutri-Score algorithm um, to the so-called steering committee. And this committee will hopefully forward our proposals uh, to the science scientific committee um, of the countries participating in the Nutri-Score for consideration. So we are uh, waiting for the next developments um, regarding the neutral score. Yeah, thank you for your attention. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Hans. Uh, extremely interesting and congratulations on all the work you've done. 
to raise awareness about the Nutri-Score. Uh, I particularly liked the uh, share pics that, that you showed. We don't, um, I think it's a nice way of, of bringing the, the message. Um, and indeed, the Nutri-Score doesn't really reflect too much on the, on the naturalness of organic products, which is really one of its um, main flaws. Um, I wanted to already ask you now, are you, in addition to this campaign, are you also proposing um, an alternative to the narrative of the Nutri-Score in, uh, at BNN? Uh, so, um, actually, we, um, we do not want to propose an alternative to the Nutri-Score at the moment. Uh, we are trying um, to develop the Nutri-Score um, together with um, politics because um, the Nutri-Score is existing right now. And um, it's already there, and um, we don't think um, uh, we can prevent the Nutri-Score to develop. So um, our aim is really to develop the Nutri-Score so that um, organic products uh, won't be disadvantaged anymore. So that's our main aim right now. Yes, indeed, that's that's probably the most uh, successful way to go, given how prominent the Nutri-Score is already in uh, in several member states in the EU. So thank you very much, Hans. We'll be back uh, after in about 10 minutes for some more questions. Uh, in the meantime, for the participants, can I remind you that if you want to ask questions, you can just write them in the chat uh, on the right side of your uh, live stream or just raise your hand and ask for the mic if you're in Warsaw. So um, without further ado, I'd like to now give the floor to our second speaker. Uh, Anna Clara Solan. She is an expert on environment and biodiversity and a founder of uh, Sayari, uh, which is a sustainability consultancy, as I'm sh and I'm sure she will be able to explain much better than I do what uh, they do at uh, Sayari. Uh, she will be telling us about the Planet Score, so an alternative, um, an idea, one of the ways in which we could uh, reach a sustainability uh, label. Anna Claire, the floor is yours. Uh, Anna Claire, I don't know if it's just me, but yeah, I think you're muted. Can you please unmute yourself? Is that better? Perfect. We can hear you very well. Yes. Sorry about that. Go I ahead. It's the stress of being uh, online. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah, before, before your colleague shows the, the slide that I have prepared, I would like to, to start with a small introduction on the context of the Planet Score. So, Planet Score is about environment and exclusively about environment. And it has been originally developed in France. And why in France? Because there is a context, uh, French legislative context, uh, with two laws in uh, 2020 and 2021 that have been introdu introducing uh, co consumer information through environmental labeling and notably for food products. And within this context, the French authorities launched a call for proposal and they invited all the willing uh, food and agriculture stakeholders, so companies, research institutes, NGOs, etc., to make proposals. The proposals could be on methodological points, but also on the format and media of information to consumer. And they were handed to the French government last June, in, in June 2021, so just uh, two, three months ago. The, the Planet Score is one of the proposals, and uh, among 20, but it's one of the two very strong proposals that is out there on the table. Uh, it is uh, all those 20 proposals and among them Planet Score, as I said, they are currently being analyzed and uh, the conclusions of government are expected for November with a regulation implemented at the end of this year or early next year. So what, can, what we can foresee at the moment from what we hear from the government is that uh, this environmental labeling in, uh, nationally in France will be mandatory, maybe not right away, but uh, there will be a step up, a stepping uh, a period and uh, within uh, three to four years, it should be mandatory. So uh, within this frame, we, we uh, as partners, you have the logos on the slide, if you could display the slide. We have three partners, and you see that on the bottom of the slide. The, the leading partner is the it's ETAPS, the French Institute for Organic Food and Agriculture. 
joined force with two consultancies, my own one, Sayari, which is more uh, into life cycle assessment and uh, who is also uh, partnering uh, at EU, EU level on uh, and very much into the uh, development of the PEP. And another uh, 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 consultancy, which is called Very Good Future. And we, our proposal covers, that's what makes it really interesting and really valuable to government. It covers the whole range of food products, organic and conventional, all food sectors, so it could be fruit, cereals, animal products, processed and non-processed food. Our proposal contains three main elements, methodology, including, as uh, Sylvia mentioned, two main elements that are lacking now in PEF, which is uh, biodiversity and impact of pesticides. And it also contains a labeling format, number two, and it also contains a set of consumer surveys, which is um, there to, to actually uh, show that the format that you see on the screen, which is not a single line with an A, B, C, D, E score, but also with sub scores for pesticide climate and biodiversity. Uh, so this, what we call composite score, is uh, is very is is more trustful to the consumer. So our again, our proposal contains three, th those three things: methodology, labeling formats and consumer surveys to show that the format actually suits consumer and, and, and uh, pro how would you say, bring their trust. So how does the planet score work? work? And uh, the first thing to, to have in mind is that we, we set, we have two compasses that are really, really defining uh, the planet score uh, as a tool. Number one, the planetary boundaries. And we, we also already know that we are beyond limits for two main elements, biodiversity and nitrogen cycle. And we also know that those elements are not very well accounted for in LCA. So those planetary boundaries really set the scene for the planet score. And a second element that really set the scene for the planet score is the European food transition scenario, which is called TIFA for 10 years for agroecology. And this uh, scenario is actually a, a very uh, circular one with a strong focus on closing the loop within agri-systems, which means, for example, and essentially reuse the organ organic feces from animals as fertilizer for crop production and not tap into uh, uh, industrial fertilizers. So, um, as required by the regulation, and you can see on the slide as well, the calculation is based on LCA, uh, so life cycle assessment, and we have been using the French food, uh, the French food inventory database, which is called AgriBalise, and also and for the this database is actually looking at uh, all the practices, uh, to French specific practices to produce different type of uh, raw materials. And then in order to assess the life cycle assessment, we use the PEF methodology uh, to convert, to, to convert uh, the different agricultural and food practices into environmental impacts. However, we know that LCA displays various limitations and especially for food products. And uh, this is leading to inconsistent rankings between food products. And this is notably the case for organic products. Uh, when they are compared to uh, conventional ones. And, and there are at least two reasons that already Sylvia pointed out. The first one is that LCA does not account for positive externalities of organic practices, biodiversity friendly practices, the, the, use, uh, the fact that organic uses less pesticides, uh, and, and then hence it's better for ecosystems, but it's also better for human health. And within our frame, we included the uh, pesticide residues that are in conventional food. And second, uh, current LCA uh, data methods uh, have shortcomings. And one of the main shortcomings is that it does not properly address uh, biodiversity uh, friendly practices. And uh, to overcome these limits, we have developed number one updates on LCA inventory and impact methods. 
And number two, we have added complementary indicators for missing elements and for positive externalities. So, and also, as you can see on the slide, Planet Score also includes a mention on animal welfare condition. So, uh, again, as I said before, Planet Score is strictly environmental. The score does not cover social nor economic issues, nor nutritional issues. But it, com it considers the main impact categories regarding human health, biodiversity, climate change. And there are those main considerations are also restituted to consumer in a way that talks to the consumer, that is trustful to consumer, that is very impactful. And those, the surveys that we've been uh, conducting also show that consumer prefers to have more detailed information even if uh, the, the, the information actually conveys sometimes um, different, uh, can be good on pesticides and not so good on climate, but then the consumer feels he has the elements in hand at hand to make the right decisions for him or her. So maybe I stop here and I, I'm ready to take some questions, especially maybe on how it compares to PEF uh and uh, also uh highlight that uh, planet score has been there has been a lot of investment in the last six months on this it's still however under development we are currently implementing it in real life that's to say for companies be them organic uh companies or or also uh, conventional and mainstream i would say uh, uh processors and and uh, retailers uh, but it, it, it will soon uh, be uh, something real also for, for, the, for the economic uh, uh, sector. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anne-Claire. That was really informative, clear and, uh, and needed. Very timely uh, intervention that uh, you put together together with uh, ETAP and the other partners. Um, I find it particularly interesting that you could, you managed to combine a life cycle analysis and put complementary indicators that make this uh, life, life cycle analysis a more complete overview of the actual impact of a product during, during its life cycle. Um, and I already have a question for you. Um, we see, we, you told us that now you're implementing it in France and certain um, companies. Um, how do you see you know, the Planet Score even going beyond France and going to the EU level? Because we clearly need uh, to change a bit the narrative from, you know, this life cycle analysis that does not look at uh, externalities? Yeah, that's a really good question. I would say there are different answers to that. Number one, uh, that, uh, I guess there are three. I should make notes of them <laughs> first. And, and then uh, uh, number one, uh, we are working with some very, uh, in France, there are big retailers. Uh, like, uh, I won't quote names, but uh, retailers in France have really a broad, uh, uh, are from, from most of them or from some of them really uh, working uh, at European level or even worldwide. So um, that's, uh, that's the first, uh, so they, they are actually interested in uh, already uh, when, if they are trying in and experimenting it at French level, they also I, I guess if and, and there are uh, there is apparently a strong eagerness of those uh, uh, mainstream uh, distributors, especially because they feel that they know that consumers actually are demanding this kind of information. So retailers are really uh, the first ones that are interested with the Planet Score, and those ones for 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 some of them have uh, international uh, markets. So that's the first level. The second uh, thing is that um, we, Planet Score has been as well as a strong, um, I would say, NGO uh, support. And the NGOs are not only uh, French NGOs, but international NGOs. So uh, with this level, I guess, uh, there is also uh, this narrative can obviously, will obviously be uh, um, very well uh, supported at European level. And three, uh, we, we know that uh, France is actually um, uh, taking the presidency of the European Union for the first semester 2022. And this 
this, I guess, uh, information, environmental labeling on food is on, I, I understand it to be on the agenda for the French presidency of the European Commission as well. So we feel that, I would say, uh, planets are a little bit, a bit aligned for this to, to, to take up at, at a broader level. Okay, um, thank you. It's actually good news if uh, the planet score is um, on the agenda of the French um, presidency. That would be already quite a step forward. I'm not saying it's on the agenda of the French presidency. I'm saying uh, uh, food and environmental labeling and fo food consumer yeah. information, I guess, is on the uh, French uh, on the agenda of the French presidency. We would like it to be the planet score, and we, we are strongly advocating for that, but uh, uh, fingers crossed. But uh, I guess there is a strong will, and, and you see that the French government is already putting some pressure uh, for, or on, those, on this uh, environmental labeling at national level. And I, I guess they feel it's a laboratory maybe for Europe a little bit. Uh, I, 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 that's my, my personal. That's my personal view. I wouldn't. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not something that, uh, that I share it personally. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, and indeed, as an NGO in Brussels, the I can confirm that the Planet Score had um, quite gathered has has gathered quite a lot of interest among NGOs um, at the EU level. I would like to now bring back uh, Hans as well uh, for a and a session um, altogether. And actually, I have a question from the audience for you, Hans. You replied to it um, already partially, but I think, you know, you can you can add to it if you want to. Um, you know, many countries, as we said, are already using the Nutri-Score. Do you think there is a way that, you know, this nutrition labeling initiative that is mentioned in the Farm to Fork strategy will not be the Nutri-Score in, in the end? Because the Commission for now has not, has neither denied nor confirmed, if, if we want to put it this way, that uh, the Nutri-Score will be the nutrition labeling that they talk about. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um... So yes, the Commission has not yet decided what kind of nutrition label uh, they want to go with, but I'm actually not aware of any other nutrition label that is already as widely used as the Nutri-Score. And um, from point of view from Germany, so it is evident that there so is a cross-party will um, for the Nutri-Score to be actually mandatory and used uh, throughout the EU. EU. Um, and whoever will build our next government in Germany, so we just um, uh, voted, um, they will um, promote it regarding the EU. Um, I'm quite sure for that. So I don't think there's another possibility that the Nutri score. Yeah, I would, I would tend to agree with you, with you on that as well. Um, I would like to now ask you a more, um, let's say, general question on labeling. Um, for instance, Anne Claire, you said um, that the Planet Score is really more about environmental labeling and it does not include, you know, social aspects or um, even nutrition aspects. And we know that the Nutri Score is clearly more focused on nutrition. So we see that there is sort of, um, we're trying to go towards less labeling. Uh, at the EU level, but at the same time, we speak about very different um, labels. So, what do you think about that? You know, will we have you know three different labels on on the packaging, and is that something good or or not really? Um, maybe Anne first. Sorry, I, I didn't. Uh, maybe Anne Claire first. This is a tough question. Um, I would say uh, you you also have to account for the readiness level of consumers. Uh, between different topics. I feel like uh, nutrition has been on pack for a long time and hence consumers are more aware of how they should make their own choices regarding uh, and I'm not I'm not uh, downplaying what Hans just said but I think there is more uh, uh, maybe education is not the right way but there is more awareness from uh, the consumer already on how to make choices uh, and the right choices for nutrition. Uh, for environment, I think there are uh, a lot of um, beliefs out there which are not, may, not, uh, not necessarily um, uh, sound beliefs uh, scientific, scientifically. For example, um, in average, the agriculture part of a food item, in average, is 85 percent 
So the impact, the environmental impact of a food product you have on your plate, in average, 85% of it happens in the field. So mm -hmm. I don't think consumers are aware of that. And that's really what we have been working on on the planet's core. And so I feel like uh, that's also why uh, within the labeling, the, the environmental labeling, we can't just put out there a single score because the consumer doesn't really know what is behind it. But rather, at this, at this stage at least, put some additional information on the main components of the score because it's, it's totally new for the consumer, the, the environmental aspects of, of food. And so the awareness needs to be raised and, and the right questions to be to be raised by consumers and and i guess there is more uh, there is more work to do and more way to go and maybe so we should probably consider labeling at different stages in terms of consumer awareness and maybe go for something more synthetic uh when the consumer is more aware and has been used has been used to uh, an information for a longer time and maybe mm -hmm. to uh, less synthetic information when the consumer when it's something new to the consumer, basically. Yeah, that's that's an interesting uh, suggestion. It's an interesting approach. Um, Hans, what do you think regarding this, you know, potential proliferation of, of labels? Uh, yes, actually, I pr can just agree um, to that. Um, so, but I think, yeah, at the end, um, maybe we will have products with um, five different uh, labels. Um, that actually couldn't be the answer. So, um, so we are actually promoting the idea of uh, yeah, more education uh, besides uh, consuming. So this is actually absolutely necessary. So people have to um, have to be aware what they do uh, when they um, buy um, foods, and um, so. Yeah, we are promoting more education. Yeah, starting um, in the kindergarten, actually. So, um, but yeah, there's no one one um, yeah uh, thing which which helps or um, solves all problems. So it's always a combination of uh, different um, parts. Yeah. No, that's extremely needed indeed. Because one could argue, do you really need you know, uh, nth label, while perhaps it would make more sense to have um, education in schools and even in kindergartens, that's really great to hear that, that you're doing, or um, campaigns as you did. Indeed, that, that is clearly an approach, another, you know, uh, way of, of, of doing things. Um, and on this, uh, let's say, proliferation of labels again, I have a question for Anna Claire, actually, from the audience. Um, so this, uh, this participant says that the planet score sounds very interesting. At the same time, um, we see that companies like big, big retailers such as uh, Lidl are already on their way to implement an eco score. So it's another type of, of sustainability labeling. So how big is the risk that there will be confusions and confusion and chaos with uh, several environmental score systems and labels in the market? And what does this mean for the PEF in the EU? Wow. <laughs> big big that's question. A, that's a very big question. Um, uh, I would say um, there is currently, let's say, on the table now in France, EcoScore and PlanetScore are the two front runners. And um, I guess uh in, in 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 at the end of the year uh the government will make a decision and the decision of the government could pretty well be uh to to have i i, I don't know but could be also to have uh, people around the table and discuss on something that could make sense uh combining uh the best of uh, of both uh, labeling systems so um but at the end of the day the government will make the decision and so there will be only one single labeling uh format and labeling uh, uh regulation let's put it that way uh so that's the first answer and the second one for regarding the pef uh, in both um methods let's say eco score and um and a planet score there are 
additional indicators to LCA. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, I guess the French government is aware that LCA is not sufficient for food products. This is something that they, they acknowledge. Uh, at EU level, I'm not sure it's such, uh, it's, it's acknowledged in the same way. Uh, I, but I guess the experiment, the, 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 the French uh, experiment, which as far as I know is the first one uh, at this state, at this level, would probably give uh, some insights to hopefully to the EU to, to, to add, uh, to add complementary indicators to, for food, uh, for food products. But, but I can't guarantee it. it it's really uh, tough to say at the, at this moment, but that's, actually number one what the french government uh actually is aware of and acknowledges and uh, number two what will probably be on the table for the french regulation uh, in the next future in the near future sorry yes and indeed uh, what you know what will happen at the national level in france will likely also have an impact on the eu level um, that, that's uh, clear. Um, now I want to go back to uh, the consumer. So the consumer is uh, relatively central in all of this. And we've heard from Hans that through campaigns, you have really um, involved um, the consumer, uh, you know, trying to, to raise awareness of what the Nutri-Score is and what the Nutri-Score isn't. So how crucial do you think the consumer is in all of this? And should, or should, you know, is regulation more important? Is it more bottom up or is it more um, top down to, to really achieve change? Uh, maybe Hans first. So, um, did I got it right? So, um, you're questioning whether they need a top down or um, or maybe. So, what, uh, what is the role of the of the consumer in all of this? In your view, you know, is it really you know the most important? Yeah, I think um, the consumer decision, uh, yeah, or the consumer decides at the end uh, what he will uh, buy. So um, at the end, it decides whether we are able to, um, yeah, lead him to the right product, um, and on the basis of, um, yeah, information and um, with support by politics, maybe. Um, but yeah. From, from our point of view, um, the decision um, of the consumer is, um, yeah, deciding, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He, he sort of votes, she, he, she yeah. sort of votes whenever they, they buy that, that's, that's yeah. something. And Anna Claire, maybe your views on the role of the consumer in terms of the planet score as well? Yeah, I, I agree with Hans uh, very much. I think uh, uh, on some, there are really, uh, how would you say, sensitive topics in what we have developed. Uh, and the most sensitive topic that you that is in a, in the planet score is around uh, pesticides, uh, and we see that uh, this uh, this topic pesticide is the number one concern for the consumer. So we feel like, despite well, for pesticides the measurements with L, within LCA are. Uh, complex, still complex and not, uh, I would say, ready to go. But on the other hand, the consumer, uh, rightly so, and rightly so, is, uh, is asking for some information on that. And we feel like, uh, we feel that this, uh, con the consumer demanding information on pesticides is actually driving also, could actually, actually also drive the agenda for, mm -hmm. for, uh, for labeling. And, and that's, that's really something, uh, in my view, that uh, is right. Uh, I think, yeah, I think consumer really matters. If consumer is not uh, within the loop and, and actually uh, aware and asking for demanding things, uh, I think it's, uh, it's less, uh, it's less uh, easy to, to have regulations put in place, basically. Yes, indeed, thank you. We, we absolutely agree on that point. Okay, so we're nearing the end of our session. I really want you thank, to thank you, uh, both, the both of you very much. I thought it was a really interesting session. I thought, I hope everyone found it as interesting as I did. I also want to thank our audience for um, being here today and for asking uh, the questions. And 
I hope to see many of you back tomorrow. We start at 10 for the second day of the Organic Food Conference with a session on the new organic regulation. And as you know, it will enter into force uh, beginning of next year. So clearly uh, we have to be prepared for that. Um, after the session on the new organic regulation, we have a session on packaging and organic, which is also uh, very uh, timely for the organic sector. An update on the pro-org project, which will be particularly interesting for processing um, companies and uh, inspiring stories for, um, of organic su successful business models. And finally, we will end with a closing um, ceremony with the Commissioner for Agriculture, uh, Mr. Wojciechowski, and our President, uh, Mr. Jan Plage. So once again, thank you very much uh, to all of you and have a lovely afternoon and evening and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>